And that is what I love about photography, that on this table you'll see um, there are different parts of my personality coming out in each of these cameras and to different moods I'll pick up a different camera. But at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're shooting and we're creating art and photos and capturing moments and you got to keep it fun. Today I'm in Vienna talking to not only a dear friend, a restaurateur, a marketing genius and a fantastic photographer and probably the most flamboyant person you will ever meet. His name is Nurel Molchow and today we're talking cameras. Hey man, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for being the first one uh, on the series called Talking Cameras. Uh, we're in your beautiful home, right in the middle of Vienna. Very excited. Um, I got this idea, as you know, uh, from Talking Watches, obviously. Uh, and I want to shout out to uh, Ben for having the idea. So I'm just going to somehow steal it. But nevertheless, uh, the passion that we share uh, is uh, wonderful. And today we're gonna just talk about the immense variety of cameras you just put out. Mm -hmm. um, and before we all get into this, how did you how did you start photography? So I've always been into art, into aesthetics, into visual beauty. Let's say um, I was also a legisthenic growing up, so for me. Texts and words were always harder to grasp and understand rather, but, but, you know, pictures were always easy for me to understand. And I could understand concepts. And when I had to think of things in my mind or explain something to myself that I didn't understand, I would do that with images. So creating this sort of photographic eye and seeing the beauty in mundane everyday situations was something I've had since I'm a kid. So I guess moving into photography was a natural path. Um, which, which camera got you? into photography. So that's a funny and that's why I brought it out from the vault. The very first camera, I think the camera that most people use is their phone. And I remember when this was presented, the first iPhone, and it was the, it was a revolution. I mean, when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, what you can do with this and to really have a camera that takes good pictures. I'm not talking about green, pixely, yeah. you know, um, these were good images and my first camera and I think the camera that I still use today frequently will be my phone camera. Yeah. Um, the evolution there will be the first iPhone here and today I'm shooting with a Samsung S22. So this was the first, the first baby. Uh, and uh, did you get it in 2007 when it came out? I got it right when it came out. I had to buy a chip from China that allowed me to jailbreak it and yeah. um, then use it in Vienna. And yeah, it was a pretty fun phone to have. Um, I had it too, still have it at home. I love that you have this on. Oh, it was even the eight gigabyte version. Fantastic. Um, what, what's your, uh, other than, than, uh, than a phone camera, what's your first recollection of like photography in general? So basically I was, I was taking a lot of photos with my phone and a friend of mine, a friend of ours, Georg, um, big shout out to Georg, who does all the beautiful jewelry that we're wearing today. Yeah. He told me. You know, I, I see that you have an eye for it. I see that you love photography, but to take you to the next step, you have to get yourself a camera. And he just sort of gave me that nudge and said, go buy yourself a camera and just see how different it is than, you know, to actively go out to take photos and not to have something in your pocket to just shoot a moment. There's a difference, you know, when so you're talking about intentionality. Exactly. Cool. Going out with intention to shoot. And the first camera I then bought was here, the... Uh, Panasonic X100, I think it was called, LX100, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I started off automatic, just shooting automatic, just learning sort of what aperture means, learning what shutter speed means, just trying to understand ISO and all the different, yeah, things that you need to take photos. But at the beginning, I was just shooting, and, 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 and you know, you had the filters inside the camera, so you could even shoot with filters to see also how that works. And I loved it, and I took it everywhere, and I shot... A lot, a lot with this camera. Um, but an aperture of 1.7 is like, and also the, the ring is really satisfying. Then the ASMR in between. And you still have it. 
as a habit. And um, it's a camera that I give my wife when we go on holiday. And I guess she also wants to shoot or she goes, you know, once a year, me and my wife, we do separate holidays. I usually go to Mykonos, but I don't want any camera or anything on me. And my wife goes farming or she goes to some farm in the countryside and then she's so embraced in nature and then she just wants to capture these things to show me later cool and and not having a phone exactly that that's awesome man um did did you did you know that you're gonna pursue it like did it hit you when you got your first this first camera i mean i instantly fell in love with it i fell in love with photography and i feel you know Parallel to me starting with photography, Instagram had just come out. So you had a platform where you could show your work and you were getting appraisal for your work, which again, motivated you to shoot more. You could see what other people were doing. You could lock into a community of photographers. And very quickly, I was able to connect with people who were better than me. Until this day, I always tried to hang out with photographers or in any field, people that are better than me, because that's how you're going to learn. You know, I never wanted to be the best amongst mediocre. I wanted to be the worst amongst the best so that I can learn and become the best myself. And Instagram opened those doors and I started shooting back then a lot of rooftop stuff. You know, for me, I come from the restaurant industry. So shooting food has been something I've always been doing. And I used the camera to shoot like early stuff mm -hmm. for our restaurants. But then it was guys from different industries that were teaching me, you know, low light situations, how to capture the essence of a city from a rooftop perspective. And it was really exciting and it motivated me again to then go shoot more different food and learn about editing and everything. Yeah. It, it was quite early when you started. Um, was this, so one part was getting to know people who can show you stuff and yeah. learn about it. Did you use any other, did you do a course? Did you do, how did you again went about it? Till this day, my two main ways of learning are asking people, having the courage, and also just, you know, giving people a compliment. People, if you give someone a compliment for what they're doing well, they're more inclined to share knowledge with you. And then YouTube. I mean, YouTube is your friend. YouTube can teach you so much. And with every platform there is, you can either be, be a consumer or you can be a content creator or someone who is learning from whatever platform it is. And I've always said, if I'm going to spend time doing something, I want to learn from it. I want to get better from it. And that's why for you in, on YouTube, you know, I learned how to use Lightroom over YouTube. I learned how to use Photoshop over YouTube. Mm -hmm. And yeah, did did any one of your 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 family members was anyone into photography? My did anyone have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My father was big into photography, and um, I mean, a he was into filming. You know, he's an artist. He's a mime, and um, he was always on tour, so he wanted to capture his travels, but then also when we kids came to the world, he would be filming us all the time and he would also take a lot of photos, analog of course, back then. I have a lot of old cameras from my father here too, which some of them are so old and complicated, I have no idea how to use them. They flip out, look like an accordion and yeah. <laughs> but so my father was always into photography. Funny enough, today he doesn't do it at all anymore. And today I'm the family photographer. How is that in your family? <laughs> that that I'm the photographer yeah. or I mean is that stressful I mean we have you know we have a big family and there were all unique individuals and everyone wants to shine and that's why I love photographing all my brothers and what their whole creativity and their partners and it's 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 fun yeah uh, sometimes we're a bit under and I say we because I'm a photographer too obviously but uh, people like obviously think that you will bring your camera and do photos And yeah, they always want you to without asking. So it's a very passive aggressive way of getting what you want. I mean, I, I, I don't mind if I'm with my camera and someone asks me to take a nice picture or I'm in the flow or I take some to the side and I take shots for them. What I hate is when I'm at a random party and someone's like, oh, give Neural the phone to take a photo because he's a photographer. And then I'm standing there for 10 minutes photographing every single person with it. And the next couple comes in and take a photo of us. And I'm like, it's a... This is not my craft, yeah? Exactly. And I'm so bad <laughs> at photography. <laughs> I'm horrible. My wife always is like, take a photo of me. And I seriously, I can't do it. I don't know how um, to do a proper nice photo, even with uh, all, all the uh, editing power I have. But I, I just can't do it. So I stick to my craft here. Um, let's move on. Uh, what was your camera after that? After the Lumix? So right after that, it was a Sony. Um, Sony, because... The people that I was 
learning from the people that I was going on these street shoot tours, they were all Sony shooters. And um, it was easier for me when I first came with my Panasonic and I was like, you know, how do you do this? Or you have different settings. They wouldn't know because they're like, that's a different camera. I'm not sure. But they all had Sony. So I'm like, okay, I need to um, save up and I need to get myself one of these Sony cameras. And to this day, is something that I also do a lot. I'm a big believer in also getting secondhand equipment. I don't think you'd always need the newest, best. You just need to find what you like. You need to find a camera that suits to you and um, and just shoot with it. And and so many people always want the newest and they're always selling a model that came out a year ago. So I just started buying secondhand cameras. And so yeah. was it a, a Sony uh, A7 II? So back to the first one, this is not my first Sony. None. It was the A7 II, I believe, yeah. Yep. Now this is the A7R. No, no, this is the A7R3. Yeah. Exactly. Very yeah. complicated. <laughs> it is. Um, and this is basically my work camera. So I will shoot um, all the cookbooks that we've done for the restaurants. I've shot with the Sony. I do most of the Instagram photos um, on all our pages with the Sony. It's a work baby. It is, um, you know, the dynamic range. You know, you're never shooting off the, you know, the continuous eye focus, everything. Like your shots will be just good. Just good. Just good. I, I love it. It's a work beast. And when it when I want to switch off and just do my work, this is what I take. Um, do you, uh, which uh, lens is on there? I have an 85, 1.4 on this. One of my favorite focal lens. master, yeah. Yeah, it's a G master. Oh yeah, I love this combination. I, um, I also have a 24. I have to say most of the time if I'm shooting for their restaurant and for their yeah for food content i'll shoot with the 24. Mm -hmm. uh, the 85 is more for the portrait so if yeah. i just want to capture the mood of the restaurant yeah. people walking around the waiters but there is there is a lot that you can do with this uh yeah. this setup you can be really far off and even shooting in one four and also this i love this about the gms to lens is also the the click here yeah great it my idea yeah perfect camera and yeah th from from the outside they pretty much did not have changed it what's that um, this basically, because we're shooting a lot also in, 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 in the middle of the day and daytime, and it just allows me to really focus in and it blocks out all the light around me and I can just really zone in and I love it. So cool. I think it's called an eye shell. Okay. N not going to put my eye on it. I think <laughs> I, um, cool. How long did you basically shoot Sony before you went on to, to the next so um, I would say I shot with Sony for about then five or six years. And then through a mutual friend of ours, also a um, fashion photographer, Pat Domingo, I fell into the hands of Leica. And um, this here just takes it to a whole new level. You know? what, what do we have here? So this is the Leica M11. This is the newest one that just came out. I've got a 90 millimeter on here, the lens is second hand, the Leica not. I shoot mainly with a 50 1.4 with the 90 and I have a 21 millimeter. Okay. But most of the time I'll be shooting with the 50 or with the 90. With the 90. And this is a Sumilux or Sumicron? This is a Sumicron. It's a Sumicron. 1 to 2.4. Yeah. That's awesome. And the 50 is a Sumilux. What captures you about Leica? So what I, what I love about Leica, <clears throat> is that unlike the Sony, as I said, which is a work piece, which I can just set and it'll automatically blast away shots, you know, um, with this year, I'm really taking my time for every shot. It taught me the patience and to take a step back in photography, taking the whole situation, you need to be, you need to learn how to focus with the rangefinder. It's something that you need to learn how to do. Um, that, I mean, there is no automatic focus. You basically, any Leica shooter will, I've never really seen a Leica shooter on all automatic. Like you're shooting manual, you you want to control the outcome of the image. It's slick, it's a lot lighter. And this is also something we all, always laugh about. When we were walking around with the Sony, I used to, we used to look like turtles with our massive backpacks with yeah. 18 lenses. You know, I take this year, I strap it around. I can spend the whole day in town and I will barely feel it. And when I want to shoot, I shoot. And when I travel, this is the camera I'm taking with me. So you basically, leave the Sony at home and you basically fully convert it to, to Leica now, except of the, the um, Same professional stuff. stuff you do, obviously. Yeah. And you're actually uh, one of the few Leica ambassadors in Austria. Yes. Yes. I'm 
extremely happy to be in the Heike family and to be have the privilege to test these new cameras and to really work with them and to host uh, workshops and teach other people who want to get into like uh, like street photography and no, it's an it's an incredible camera. How does this camera help you to be a better photographer? a better photographer? Um, again, you have to be a good photographer to even shoot with Leica because you need to understand how everything works. You need to be quick with your focusing. You need to anticipate situations because I can't just yeah I'm not gonna fire away. I'm gonna see what is happening, especially when it comes to street. I need to I see an interesting person. I'm going to run ahead of them to anticipate them walking. I'm going to check my focus, check all my aperture, everything's done, and then take that perfect shot. And so basically, yeah. it's doing it. You take a step back from all the automated things that yeah, a, another camera can do, a mirrorless camera can do, and take like three steps back, and then you have to you grind. Step, exactly. And you have to grind to come back to basically where you were already before. Exactly. And I'm, I also think, I also feel like when I'm shooting with the Sony, I'm also editing differently. I don't know. Everything is more vibrant, more colorful, more unrealistic, let's say, but beautiful. And when it comes to the Leica, I'm very puristic. I'm barely editing my images. I'm really keeping it as much as possible straight out of cam because the Leica also, the lenses have a special light. They have a special type of color grading and toning that only a Leica has. And um, I'm also a huge fan of the Leica Q. For those who don't, you know, dare to take that big step into this direction where you can do automatic focus and everything. So an intermediate between these two would be the Leica Q. Also an amazing camera. But again, for me, I didn't want the in-between. I wanted to go I wanted go, go full width. Uh, is this your first M? No, I had the M10P before it in Chrome. Also a beautiful look. And what actually made me change to the black one in this case was that, as you know me, I used to have very long curly hair and you'd walk around with my hat and my thick hair and then this very vintage looking camera and everyone would look at me um, and it would be very hard to shoot street inconspicuously because everyone would look. Mm -hmm. And the second I would have that camera in my hand, people's eyes would follow and they would notice that I'm shooting them. Yeah. Now, with the shorter hair, with the black camera, I'm sort of holding it it's a lot more inconspicuous and I've been able to get way closer to people and shoot way more intimate situations. And um, that's why I think in the future I will stick to a black Leica. And it's also lighter than the it chrome is. version. It is lighter than the chrome version. And again, that makes a difference. If you're carrying your camera around all day yeah. and I try to take a camera with me almost every single day, mm. that makes a difference. Yeah, I love that you put the, the red... Um, the red shutter yeah. button on there it fits really nicely and and also this i think this is for the leica um the the thumb grip is essential for me because it's such a sleek design and when you're carrying it around the whole yeah. day yeah it otherwise uh it gets a bit uh i always get a bit nervous to drop it this and also um you know leica shooters in history were horizontal shooters this is how we were shooting and today we're living in a very vertical world yeah. when it comes to photos and I mean, this is just, this makes a difference, you know? Yeah. You're holding it like this here, you can, it takes a bit of weight off and yeah, love it. Although I do have to say my next grail yeah. will be uh, like a black paint, which again will go a little heavier, but I'm someone that likes to use my cameras a lot. Yeah. So I like patina Yeah. and, um, and the Leica black paints, um, for those that don't know, they're completely out of brass below and then they get painted in black. So over time, the brass will come through and it'll look like it'll have this beautifully aged patina. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, I'll just have a few scratches on it, which hurt me more. That's why I think my grail walk to my grail, sorry, <laughs> camera will be a Leica M11 black paint. How much are there? Do you know? No, it, has, it hasn't been released yet. It hasn't been released. When the black paints come out, they're usually limited to a thousand pieces and they are extremely hard to get. How much more expensive are they? Do you know? An auction, so old black paints will sell for anywhere upwards of 30,000 and the extremely old rare ones from famous photographers will go into the millions. Yeah, that was just a, a like an auction with what? Do you it, remember the... In LA and I don't know, but it was, I think, I think it's something crazy now, but I think it was something like 10 million. That yeah. probably could, could be right. We'll, we'll, we'll have a look at it. <laughs> exactly. Those, those really famous ones are all black paints. Um, I, I follow uh, Jason Mamoa. Yes. And... Uh, the, the, 
Jason Momoa is the the guy who plays Aquaman. I think mm-hmm. he's not the best role um, to put it up because I don't particularly like the movie. But he's a fantastic, yeah, um, a fantastic person, very outgoing, and he's a, a fanatic when it comes to photography and mm-hmm. videography. Yeah, and uh, he, I, I would love to have him on the show. <laughs> he has he has a brass version uh, of a, a red camera. Yes. Of the Komodo. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they gave that to him, and I think he has all the brass versions, but it's just brass. They are not yet painted. Yeah. The brass versions of um, of the M, 10 P, and the Q2. I don't know if there is any such thing. I will also just put yeah. photos on. And he's he's there. buying at auction. He's also buying old brass. He's, yeah. he's he loves that look, and it, and you know it, it is beautiful. And. Uh, what what I love about about Leica and uh, I don't own one but I, I tried a couple of them um, is that they're just a piece of it's not only a camera it's a piece of design or you can call it art yeah. that you have with you that ages with you that um, is just beautiful to look at and also take care about it. it's not a yeah. just another piece of equipment it's like okay there's the new uh, Sony that comes out but no no. Uh, no offense to to any camera, but there's the new updated version that's just tossed that in the on yeah. the side. Yeah, uh, and you'll probably if you don't need the money to buy a new Leica, uh, you'll probably keep it and grow your collection and, and also also pass it on like your dad did um, did to you. And uh, quite a while ago, uh, we still have a couple of, of things right there, and I'm really yeah. excited. Um, so sometime um, ago, you fell deeply, deeply into another photography hole which is yes. analog photography exactly how did that come about again um like the move from sony to leica the move from taking another step back and really going into the essence of photography and that is analog photography where you cannot see the picture until it's developed you take you're shooting even slower i mean you are i often find myself just you know i hold the camera and i see the moment and i, I will not press the shutter unless it's perfect. I got 36, maybe 37 shots in my film and every single one is valuable and you want to have every single shot be a banger, you know, be a shot that you can use, print, show, you know. I I mean, the difference I would say amazingly is when I'm shooting Sony and I'm on a job, I'll end the day with like a thousand shots. Easy, could happen. With the Leica, I'll be maybe on maximum 100, but I'll be under 100 shots for sure. Mm -hmm. And when I'm with my analog camera, it'll be a maximum of 36. I'll never shoot two rolls ever and in a day. Way too expensive. I also won't shoot one roll in a day. You know, it'll, it'll follow me for a trip with me. Mm-hmm. And and then the, the whole process of getting it developed, um, seeing the pictures, it's amazing. And I got this to my 36th um, birthday and it's a Contax T2. It's uh, probably the most expensive camera that is on the table now. Not, no, 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 <laughs> not kidding. But the Context T2, I don't know uh, how many of you are into analog photography. I think this had a price increase of the past four years. Yeah. Like it not only quadrupled, but it's like 10 times. I think if you want to buy a Context T2 today, if you find a good one, you're looking at two and a half thousand euros. Yes. And I, I, I also got super lucky with this one. Um, I got it's a black one because it's a black one and the black ones are the rarest. And this was, I was, I was lucky. I found it over like Wilhaben over a platform and it was a big camera collector who just yeah. wanted to sell it just pre height. Yeah. I think probably bought it three years ago. Yeah. Paid 800 euros for it. And, um, and what I wanted with this year, the reason I took the contacts is I wanted a good lens. It has the size lens, 2.8 aperture. And I wanted something to switch off to take me away from the Leica, away from having to manually focus and think of the situation, but literally point and shoot. You just you just not think of anything. I'm setting it on automatic and I'm just walking around and shooting and capturing in that second the moment or you know, taking the time um to frame. But I don't wanna I wanna focus on the moment and not my settings, if that makes sense. Yeah, hundred percent. Um it, what what type of uh, focal length is it? Do you know? This is, it's a 35 millimeter. A 35. Is it 35 or is it something weird like 28 millimeters? We'll also look at that. But yeah. um, uh, I was looking into context for a while, but. Uh, I think it's either 28 or 35, yeah. one of the two, yeah. But a uh, beautiful camera also probably goes together great when you take 
Exactly. The Leica, so yeah. now on holidays, I'll either take the Leica and the contacts, and a lot of the time I'll just take the contacts and just put it in my pocket. And um, it just some of my favorite shots have been done with with the contacts. Yeah, that, that's awesome. What else do we have? So then in the very front is a camera I haven't shot with yet, but also if we're talking about history and family, it's a Polaroid camera of my wife's grandmother, who is so it's um, oh, original. It's an original Polaroid um, from the Hollywood's you know, golden era, I guess, when they were, they were just coming out, the she was shooting with it, you know, she was born in the 30s. And um, this is beautiful. And this is an original old school Polaroid camera. Uh, do, you, do you know how old it is? I, I, I don't know how old it is. But I, take a guess. Take a guess. I guess it probably from the, I don't even know when Polaroid came out, but I would say for, probably from like the 60s or something. Uh, but we'll, 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 we'll have a look at 70s. This is beautiful. That's fantastic. I've never shot with it. I need to, I need to shoot with it. Actually, I did shoot with it once and I had a second, it came with a second one of these. Yep. And the instantly flashes, one of the lights the broke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, I, I, if I'm, if I'm not incorrect, it's a, it's a flash tube and it still says general electric flash bar number two. And there are one, two, three, four, five flash cubes. So with every, um, shot that you take one of those. Oh, that is, oh, one of them does actually burst. So yes. The, oh, this is so scared that I took one shot in the first and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to break it, put it right back down. <laughs> no, no, no. This is, this is supposed to be, that's why there are five on there. Oh, wow. Um, and, uh, also like cameras back then had, had something like a flash cube, basically really a cube. Yeah. Then you would just turn it. Yeah. So you have four sides and you would turn it. Oh, every, turn it and exactly, shot. Exactly. Okay. So it would sit in the center as, as the flashes do, and you would just that's turn hilarious. it around. Um, yeah, it's, it's hilarious. Uh, wonderful. That's so funny. Okay, so then, so that's um, our little Hollywood memory. Exactly. Then I got given um, by another photographer friend, Stefan Johan, um, this Yashica. Yeah. You know, this is a medium format. This will confuse the hell out of you the first time you shoot in with it because it's all uh, upside down. Upside down. It's not upside down, it's flipped. It's flipped. It's exactly. Exactly. It's, exactly. it's Spiegel for Cat. You have yep. a little thing here to. Do your focus. Look, it's, I got it fixed now. Um, I have a film in here. I've shot one roll of film with it where, because I just didn't know how to use it properly. Yep. You have 12 shots in the 120 format. And yep. I think two shots came out <laughs> and the rest of them, I don't even know what I was shooting, but it is fun. You know, it said Vivian Myers kind of aesthetic and look, and I, you know, I definitely want to take this bad boy out soon. We, we just we just had one uh, a friend in, in the office David he uh, he brought a Yashica uh, to the office it was not this model um, um, but uh, a very similar one um, and he gave it to me he's like hey I have this let's try to figure it yeah. out and he told me only one thing is basically there are two lenses on here mm -hmm. and one lens is to focus and, and the other one actually is, is to shoot ah. so because what you see here is basically the top here and yeah. then what actually your shooting is a bit lower. Exactly. It's lower because that's where the film sits. Okay. So that, that, that was, that was very interesting. And yeah, um, I, I did the same. I, I, I took it out and it took me probably five minutes to, to take a picture, just a landscape. Yeah. Shot. Just to get your orientation. But it's, it's wonderful because it's a, it's a square format. Exactly. Um, and, uh, I have a couple of films. I actually have one with me right now, uh, that needs to be developed. Um, and, uh, it's just wonderful also because I think that you're, if you don't know kind of how to use it like m more magical shots appear because yeah you're not so focused on beauty you're just focused on, on like it, how does this work what am i doing yeah exactly <laughs> uh, hopefully somehow nailing nailing the shot and also the um like the aperture and and also like just having the the right exposure uh, on it it's uh it's fantastic and then the newest camera um i got myself to my birthday it's an edixa I mean, this is also a fully never heard it. This is a manual beast. Wait, I don't know. I think I have no film inside. What I? I think I don't know. I mean, this year when you're looking through it, it's also the focus. You see, there's a line, and you have to sort of move the focus. You have to line things up. Oh, it's like it's basically like an, it is like a rangefinder. Like yeah, a rangefinder, but not quite. I think it's called prism focusing. Oh yeah, you have to line it up. Oh yeah, yeah, and then quite a so bit of focused breathing right there. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. 
And with this year, you know, I have an app, a light meter app. So you need to check what eyes you have as a film. You need to check what the night situation is, do all your settings. But this is, I mean, it's fully manual. It's this metal beast. I think it's on a film, so I'll show it. All right. Here you got to lock it out. I mean, that's that's awesome. good. And that's you have good. to also when you when you um, uh, yes. forward the, the film, do, yes. do it again to the. Oh, oh, and that. then you have two different. It's like a typewriter photography. It is. Uh, like a camera. And again, this will be the contra to the contacts where I'm shooting, you know, without thinking and it's all automatic. Yep. Here, I really got to know my settings. You, you know, a second a cloud comes in, the lighting already changes. You have to really be quick. What you can do beautifully with this is double exposure. Oh, okay. Um, you can just shoot yep. twice over one film. And I mean, the films that I've developed with this year and the shots that I've gotten, I took it to Napoli. Amazing. The color is the grain. It's so beautiful. And it comes with two different um, viewfinders. Okay. So you have this viewfinder and then you have a top viewfinder as well, which is absolutely beautiful. What, what focal length is 35, 35 again it came point eight. It came with a fifty and a thirty-five. No, oh, that's awesome. How much did you pay? Do you want to Yeah, yeah, no, no. no. I've paid four hundred euros. But this was um like you know, in the if we're talking about for this is full box and papers. It came with everything. The original manual, uh, all the little boxes and that this is from like the sixties and it's I mean in perfect condition. And it came with replacement glass. I mean, like this was someone who had this at home and probably bought it, never shot with it, kept everything in perfect condition. And it's and if we had this feature on today's cameras, so I'm, I'm sh if you close, if you open, if you open up the the aperture, basically it shows yeah. you, it shows you like a reference on exactly. what you do. Uh, it's it's fantastic. Um, it would help a lot of people who want to get into manual shooting to know what they're doing. It's like in which way it goes. That's a lovely camera. I love it. I love it. And I mean, I mean, this is a he heavy, and um, but man, it fits. It fits to you like a glove. I love it. It's, I love this. Beautiful. Glove. Which uh, films are you shooting? So um, I I love Cinestill. Cinestill is a new company which is bringing out very Instagrammable. Um, Type films like the Cinecell 800 T is this, you know, you shoot at night, the red tones, everything sort of glows. It's like using a mist filter on top. Mm -hmm. They have the 50D, which is beautiful for daylight. They've just brought out the 400D, which I have ordered but haven't shot yet. Mm -hmm. Those are films that when they, they're they developed, they will look similar to the style how we would edit in Lightroom. Um, so I love those. Mm -hmm. But I recently also discovered that I actually want my analog shots to look like old analog shots and yeah. not like new digital ones. Yeah. So I'm shooting a lot of Kodak, you know, yeah. Kodak Porta 800 mm -hmm. and Kodak Porta 400. And uh, I just recently, yeah, it's funny now when you, if you open my fridge, there's just a whole um, section oh. dedicated to a film. To film. That's amazing. Um, uh, will you get into uh, developing it yourself and then scanning it yourself? I don't think so, because literally around the corner, we have an amazing photo to end up being shot. Okay, cool. And it's so simple. You know, you bring it there on a, okay, on, on, on Tuesday, they develop um, film and on uh, the, the, the color films. And on Wednesday, they do black and white. So I bring it on a Monday. And by latest Thursday, I have the films perfectly developed. And I'll get them per week transfer on the one hand. And then I walk in and then I just cross the ones that I want printed. And I started really printing out my pictures. Perfect. And now soon I will just get an album and start writing notes and just keeping like a visual diary. A log, basically. A log yeah. Of, yeah. Of, of all these moments. And um, uh, that's amazing because this is, uh, I think, uh, when it comes to analog photography, it's such a hype right now. And I fully understand it. I, I have to keep myself from mm -hmm. falling into this, uh, into this, uh, fall down the, into this rabbit, rabbit hole. hole. Because it is expensive. Like. First of all, like getting getting the film yeah. is is very very expensive by now because there's such a demand and yeah. no company is uh, is is producing enough films. So yeah. There's a scarcity, and then uh, also just if you I don't know what how much it is that you get your film developed, but also this part is quite exactly. quite intense. So so I've been been looking uh, obviously I follow uh, William Verbeek, um, uh, a fantastic uh, American. 
uh, former, I think, Belgium yeah, YouTuber. Uh, shout out to Willem. Um, and he does basically only uh, analog photography. And uh, he shows how he has it set up. And it's, it's incredible. And what I also love is when you basically... Um, when you do your own like digitalization of the film, yeah, it's not that hard, and it basically it's also one step less that you have to invest hundred uh, percent into getting your your photos and however you want. And also, I think I've seen it, and I've asked a couple of people to to like give me the print uh, like the digital version of it in a higher uh, DPI. Yeah, yeah, um, because I actually want this. Uh, I want to print it yeah. big and the yeah bigger you go the more they charge so so if i go into it i'm probably gonna go fully into it get one of those bags and start yeah start with the chemicals but uh Again, it's, yeah it's beautiful i've really fallen in love with it and um you know what you see here is diversity and i think to keep things interesting it's about changing it up doing you know sometimes this sometimes that and it's about switching between cameras switching from digital to analog it's about um, shooting when you're abroad and discovering a new city, but it's also shooting at home to rediscover your own city. And that is what I love about photography, that on this table you'll see um, there are different parts of my personality coming out in each of these cameras and to different moods I'll pick up a different camera. But at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're shooting and we're creating art and photos and capturing moments and you got to keep it fun. There could have been any better words to finish this. Thank you, man, for your time. Thank you so much, Patrick. It was fun. Uh, gorgeous collection. Thanks for taking the time. And thank you guys for watching. I hope to get you uh, some more of these uh, episodes with close to as genius guys as you are. Uh, until next time. See you guys.